Hey there Hunters, and welcome back to the Gunners Guild. I'm going to be dishing out some secret info today for everyone, even for the less efficient melee hunters out there. Today in Wild Hearts, we're going to be discussing talismans and everything you need to know about them, literally flipping everything, not cookbait garbage. Myself, with the help of some other Discordies, farmed a lot of talismans so we could isolate pretty much how everything works, so let's just go ahead and get into this. So first, Talismans. Let's go over what they are, or more specifically, what they can be, because I'm sure you're all aware of what talismans are at this point. But talismans can be very powerful, as they can pretty much contain any skill in the game. I don't think any are excluded. This includes skills found on armors, as well as skills on weapon trees. Granted, for the most part, values of skills are lower on talismans than they would be found on your armors or weapons, for obvious reasons, because you can have up to 5 talismans. Now, talismans do have potential to be build-altering as well, because they can contain fixed skills that you would put on your weapon, letting you branch out to other weapon skills, and then you can change your armors to compensate as well. Like, it's pretty nutty how good they can be, and let me emphasize on that again, they can be. Now, with the bait out of the way, let's get into how to obtain our talismans. Now, obviously, you do get talismans for your end of reward quest, but there are many other ways to farm talismans. There are like four ways to get talismans. First is that on maps, there are relics that look like rusted swords, and these can be picked up, and they're just all over the place. And you get a specific talisman for each one of these. You can find these quickly by upgrading your scout towers in the Karakuri menu to be able to locate the secret items. This will populate your map with the question marks, and you can just go and hunt them down. There are plenty of websites that can help you with this, however, they're mostly not entirely accurate because there are 36 fixed talismans, not 24. I don't know if the game can just not load enough question marks or what, but once you're done collecting your talismans, go back to the maps and select the invasive version of the map, and that will have additional different talismans on it, and you can get the rest that way. You do want some of these talismans, as they do have some pretty good weapon-specific skills on them, as well as just some other generally good talismans. Plus, you gotta get your Tsukumos anyway, so go do that, it doesn't take too long. The second way to farm talismans is the normal hunting of kimono. But each kimono, if you didn't know, has an affinity for specific types of skills, so you can target farm for certain skills with relative ease once you know what you're looking for. Of course, you won't get a charm every time, but you can still safely grind out talismans without too much time wasted. I'll leave a link in the description for my spreadsheet for references if you want to see what monsters kind of drop what kinds of talismans. Of course, this isn't going to be a complete list because it's all hand-gathered information, and our sample size is going to be a little bit low just because of the amount of time it takes to farm these things but you can quickly see what each monster can drop. Also, people like to claim that using Hunter Arm increases the chances of getting talismans, and that is not true. At least I've seen zero evidence to support that theory besides a dev saying so on some interview. I don't buy it. I played with my Karakuri spam build that usually does about 300 arms each hunt, and I think I got one talisman in about 10 hunts, whereas most of the time I think getting a talisman is about a 1 in 4 chance without using any Hunter Arm. So if it does increase the chances, it's not by much. So unless someone has some solid hard evidence that says that this is going to work, I'm saying that that theory is BS. I grind that out almost 400 talismans, so I have a pretty decent sample size myself. Anyway, back to this type of talisman farm. So monster talisman pools also don't seem to differ between regular, mighty, and volatile versions. The percentages all come in small ranges, and it seems like the same ranges are regardless of difficulty. I don't have enough data myself to support that theory, but I only hunted mighty and volatile monsters, and they were about the same. Some other people have gathered charms from lower rank monsters, and they do seem to fall into the same parameters. Like, I have some lower rank talismans, and they pretty much look exactly the same. So, like, on the table here, you're not going to be able to tell which ones are from Mighty and which ones are from low rank monsters. But again, not enough evidence to support that claim, like, 100%. But what it does mean is that you really don't have to hunt the volatile monsters for better talismans, as they appear to drop the same talismans as Mighty versions, and Mighty monsters are just that much easier to deal with than compared to volatile monsters. But let's talk about the deeply volatile monsters and their talisman grind. So, the third type of talisman grind which you can do are from the deeply volatile monsters, which are guaranteed to drop one talisman every single hunt. While these share the same names and types of regular talismans, deeply volatile talismans differ in two ways. First is that they have much more random and wild pools of skills that can drop, it's not so fixed like the regular monster counterparts. We definitely need more data on the deeply volatile monsters, but they can get skills like earplugs and fusion master and sprint master and all those other good fixed skills. So you can get some pretty wild stuff. Now, the second is that these talismans can also roll slightly higher values than the other ones. So you can get stuff like 3% elemental boost, 6% desperation, 8% blade to bar, just higher values in general. But they also have lower values in there too, so it's not always going to be higher and some good stuff. Which, honestly, I feel like it should. It feels kind of bad to get a garbage talisman from these deeply volatile mons you have to pay to actually hunt. 
So in the end though, you will want to farm DP Volatile Monsters for some min-max charms, but I really would recommend getting your base set of charms from regular monsters first, because there's no telling what you'll find from this deeply volatile variant. Now there is one last final way to farm talismans, and that is from the Visitor Request. You ever see that guy in Minoto, he wants to you to kill like a rage tail, just some person hanging out there? Those guys? Yeah. They always give you a talisman at the end of their hunt, 100% of the time. And if it's a quest with two monsters, you get two talismans. Now we have absolutely zero idea how to populate the visitors because the game tells you nothing, but we do have some quick references regarding them. First is that there seems to be a soft cap of 5 visitors per day, with a potential hard cap of 7. That usually shows up after a few hours apart after your first 5. After that, it is a full 24 hours before you will see your more visitors, and this is 24 hours after the last one you did. The second note is that if the visitor is there and you don't want to do his quest, well, you kind of don't get any more visitors until you do. It's always going to be the same person there until the request is done, even if you close the game and come back. Unless, you know, you wait your 24 hours and reset your day, whatever. Third is that these are actual player characters with names and you go into their worlds and do their quests. So generating a visitor request has to be done by another player somehow. But we've all tried, you know, failing quests and using the dragon shrines and nothing really seemed to work. So we don't know how these are getting generated and how to get them more consistently. And we also don't know how to get them not to be the first three quests, you know, Rage Tail, Sap, Scourge, or King Tusks. The quests feel random, but it's like 99% of the time it's those three quests. We have gotten some things like Fume Beak and Deathstalkers and Mighty Variants and Volatile Quests, but they're really rare. Anyway, sorry about the rambling on these visitors. I know you're just wondering why does it matter and what does it give? Well, the visitor rewards, like I said, are offering talismans every single time, and they are special talismans. The first reason why they're special is that they always have one skill. Just one. They also don't seem to have a difference in tier between, you know, the regular, mighty, and volatile monster quests. Like, it's always going to be the same types of talismans. So the actual quest doesn't seem to matter all that much. Now, the second difference here is that each talisman has a suffix. These sort of words that make me think that they're coming from a very specific pool of talismans, so talisman tables. Each visitor request has a different suffix and therefore a different pool of talismans and skills. The third and most important part about the visitor talismans is that they are the only way that I've seen that you can get weapon skills on talismans besides the fixed ones you get on the maps. Yes, all in any weapon skill, deep arrow, speed shooter, melee stuff, key based fortification, like it's all there. Anything that you can see on your weapon tree can be on these talismans, but of course there's a catch. Typically, these values are incredibly low, usually half or lower of what you'd see on the weapon tree. So like if you see Claude Master on the tree for 15%, typically the talisman's going to come out between 3 and 8%. Same for Extreme Archer, we have 10% on the tree, and the talismans can be about 4-6%. to A lot of weapon skills are 1-4% to even, which is very bad and it's kind of wasted, especially since these talismans always have exactly one skill. Now there is an upside to these talismans. And that is that there are skills with fixed, no percentage, no flat values or anything like that, and they will be in their full glory, allowing you to get talismans that would have skills for your weapons like Deep Arrow, Steely EI, Hammer Extendi. Like, you can then recraft a weapon and get something else like more crit or crit damage. And those are extremely rare talismans, but they're really, really good. And the normal weapon skills typically seem to be too low value to be useful, but these fixed skills are pretty good in my opinion. So hopefully I caught your attention and now you're all pondering the different skills that you can get. Then it may dawn on you, well if there's a hard limit of 7 a day, how did you grind all of these and how do I get more? Well there's an exploit you can do, of course we're going to show you. So if you want to repeat a visitor request without consuming your daily limit, all you have to do is finish your hunt and then after the reward screen when you got your talisman, open up your menu and then return to your own Monado before the timer runs out. This works on console as well as PC. Returning to your own town will cause an error saying that the host disbanded the group, and that'll force boot you back to your own Monado. When you show up, the same visitor is going to be there as if you never completed the quest, so you can just go again, and again, and again, and grind out talismans to your heart's content. Now do note that this is the same visitor, so the pool will be of the same suffix of talismans. So if you get a bunch, and you don't see anything you like, and you start seeing duplicates and stuff, try finishing up and just waiting for another visitor. Visitor talismans are kind of awful in my opinion. Not only are the values terrible on them and being locked to one skill is bad, but it's a shame that the only good skills in their pools seems to be the fixed weapon talismans, which are very important, and they're pretty rare, so it could just kind of take you a long time to get anything decent, and pretty much everything else that isn't a fixed skill is going to be really bad, so honestly it feels awful most of the time to grind these. Okay, I think that's pretty much everything about talismans, where to get them, how to farm them, what to farm them, and what to look for. So. 
please check out my reference sheet to see what you can farm and where. Also, thank you to my Patreon members for supporting me and my Discord members for helping me out with findings. If anyone wants to talk shop about games, feel free to join the Discord, but that's going to be all for me. I think I pretty much finished everything this game has to offer, so that's great. Finally put it down. But uh, yeah, thanks and good luck out there, hunters.